Pinya is the official state management library for Vue. It has the throne UX and it provides a very easy to use and powerful interface to deal with stateful data. As part of the collection of plugins that we have, we have one that allows you to track updates to your state when you're using Pinya as your state management library. So in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to set it up and use it. So let's go. All right, as usual for this example, I have a sample app that is simulating a e-commerce site, a very simple e-commerce site. I have two products and I want to add them to the cart and I also able to remove them and get a calculated sum and so on. So this all is powered by Vue and Pina at the same time. We have the code here available and as you can see on the app.view file I have the card store that is uh, powering all that and allowing me to add and remove products from it. This is the store that I want to track for this example and for that the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the plugin for the tracker now that I have the tracker already working and configured. You can see here that this is my project key and here is the application already open with the session recorded uh, with the app. So I'm going to show you how to add the tracker plugin into it. The first thing uh, that we do is we install the npm package. You'll notice that it's called tracker dash UX. This is because it's following on the previous tracker. It's an expansion of the UX plugin and it is also compatible with Pina. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to import the, the tracker, simply calling it Pina plugin. Open replay and the tracker here. Once I have the Pina plugin import it. Now I'm going to use the start tracker function which also takes a plugin array. This function uh, I created for this project I'll show it to you in a second but know that we can add a plugin array here with all the details for all the plugins that we want to add to our tracker. In our case this I'm just going to be using the Pina plugin. I'm going to be giving it a name, uh, let's call it Pina, and you'll see why it's important in a second. And I'm going to add the FM property as well, which is going to reference the Pina plugin uh, object that I imported before. And with that, we have the tracker ready, but we can really use the plugin just like this, because the plugin is going to be set up, but when it gets set up on the tracker, it returns a value, which is a store wrapper that we're going to be using to tell exactly the tracker which store it needs to track. For that, the start tracker function actually returns a, the list of return values from the, all the plugins that we use. So I'm going to show you how to use it right now and then I'll show you what it means. That's all you have to do. You have to get the Pina value from the return hash, hash map. And why Pina? Because that's the name you used. If you wanted to use a different string here, that is the name of the variable that you will be uh, exporting from the return hash map. With that, we have the wrapper ready, the Pina wrapper, but we're not using it anywhere. So now we have the Pina plugin returns value. That function will let us create a store wrapper for our tracker but we haven't done so yet, so let's create it. And we'll call it a uh, cart here. This value is simply going to be used on the replay window when we look at the uh, state updates, but it's not gonna be used anywhere else in our code. Now we have the store wrapper, but the wrapper has to be used on the store. However, the store is not here, the store is on the app.view file. And since we can't really share the store wrapper directly, we're going to be using a simple module I created called Store Manager. And it'll allow us to momentarily save the store wrapper we created and then use it somewhere else. So I'm going to import the save 
store wrapper function from a uh, stores manager, which I'll show you in a minute, and simply call save store wrapper and with the store wrapper which is created. And that is all we need to have the store wrapper set up and ready to be used. Now I'm going to go to the app.view file and I'm going to use the store. I'll show you the details in a minute. So like I said, um, on this app.view, we need to get the store wrapper which is created. So I'm going to import the get, the get store wrapper function from our store store manager to chess file and then I'm going to get the wrapper with this function and then I'm going to simply wrap uh, the card store store with this the store is wrapped which means we are now capturing all state updates and that information is being sent to operably through the tracker you don't have to do anything else Now, as a detail, the stores manager functions are very simple. Like I said, the store wrapper simply stores in memory the store wrapper that you give it, and then the get store wrapper simply returns the latest one that you saved. There is no more complexity here, but if you had a more complex app with multiple wrappers, you could be doing something else. And now the most complex part here will be the start tracker function, which is not really complex. It just takes care of instantiating the upper replay tracker and calling the start method on it. So you have the instantiation here and the start method called here on line 39. However, in the middle, I'm taking care of going through the array of plugins if it is present. And for each plugin, I'm calling the use method with the function that I provide, which is the imported object or the, the imported function from the plugin in this case. And I keep the return values like I mentioned here before and they are indexed by the name. Uh, that's why you specify a name for each plugin. And then on the start tracker functions return value, we add the tracker, the user ID, if it's present, and then we decompose the plugins return object, which contains all the values returned by the use method. And that is why here we use it this way. And now we'll just simply test the application once more, we'll just Again, making sure that we add some products to our store and then remove a few. And that is it. We now wait for the replay to appear a few minutes. And we should be able to look at the store updates. And now we have the replay here ready to see it. And if you pay attention, you'll see that everything I did is happening. But you have a new tab here called UX. This is again because this plugin is compatible with both UX and PDM. If you open it, you will see the card store that I named, remember, uh, at the beginning, and then all the mutations, the add and the remove, the two removes I did. And if you want more details, you can see the payload and uh, essentially all the information from each event. And that's it. The plugin's now working and tracking data. So remember, Set up the plugin once you have the tracker working on your application. Use the return value from calling the start tracking function as the store wrapper. And use the store wrapper to, you know, wrap the store that you want to track. Finally, remember that you can see the updates to your state on the dedicated tab inside the replay window. If you have any questions or doubts about how to set up this plugin, reach out to us on our Slack channel with the link in the description and we'll be more than happy to help you. Until then, catch you on the next one.